Uh, all right, hello everybody, my name is Inge Borg. And the next 15 minutes, I'm going to talk about loneliness and students. A little bit about me, I gained a, a degree in health and nursing paper research at the Medical University of Austria. Then I did general adult nursing. And then I moved to the UK to do a master's of science degree um, in public health at Brunel University. So my dissertation was about experiences of loneliness at Brunel University. A little bit about the background. Um, research suggests that there's a U-shaped distribution of loneliness among people in the United Kingdom, which also means there are higher levels of loneliness um, among younger people, so among people under the age of 25 years old, which also means that students may be more vulnerable to loneliness. However, less attention has been given to students um, and loneliness. When I did my literature review, I found some papers dealing with students' loneliness, but mostly in the United States or in Asia, but I didn't really find papers in Europe. I just found one paper which was from Germany. But it could be that students are more vulnerable to loneliness. It could be because attending university is a change in people's life. People have to adapt to new surroundings, to, to new people. People move away from home, they have to cook for themselves, they have, they have not their mom here, so they have to organize things for themselves. And thirdly, like me, people move abroad for studying and they have to adjust to a new language, to a new culture, and all these things may make people more vulnerable to loneliness. So my aim was to explore the birth of loneliness at Brunel University and to measure the extent of loneliness and to identify groups particularly at risk for loneliness at university. So how did I do that? I developed a questionnaire which consisted of three parts and generated from the literature review I had three parts. One was socio-demographic questions, one was about the burden of loneliness, so I used the UCLA loneliness scale full version and I used also self-rating scale to be able to compare results. And I had one part um, consisting of social relationships and communication, about modes of communication, about happiness, how people feel about being alone. Then I did some piloting, I did cognitive interviewing, and nearly all of the questions seemed to work out quite, quite well. I used um, SPSS for calculations, and then I compared my results with data from, the, uh, from SSS, from the European Social Survey, in order to have a comparison group. How did I do my analysis? I used descriptive statistics um, to identify characteristics of my population, to identify frequencies and distributions of my participants. Then I did bivariate correlations, and from these significant ones, I did regression modeling. So generated from the literature review, I identified a few predictive factors. Here you see gr them grouped together, otherwise it, I would speak two hours. Mm -hmm. So um, I included demographics, education, um, health, about, it was about quantity and quality of social engagements. It was about um, important things of a student life. It was about um, social relationships modes of communication, how do students communicate, do they communicate mostly um, via telephone or do they communicate via text messages or do they use um, Facebook or Skype. So now um, my key results, first I'm going to tell you about my key characteristics, then I'm going to tell you about burden of loneliness and then <coughs> I will speak about the key predictive factors of loneliness among students. <coughs> Altogether, I had 127 participants, which was more than 10 papers I found in my literature review. The mean age was around 23 years old. Um, around two-thirds were female students, ar around two-thirds were undergraduate students. Most of them were single, most of them were from Europe and white, and nearly all of them left their former home, left their parents' home to study at university. Now looking at the burden of loneliness, here you can see um, its normal distribution. Um, the UC loneliness scale, it goes from 20 to 80 points, uh, scored, and 
I, my mean score was around 48. And the research suggests there's a cutoff score around 46. So which means nearly half of the students who participated were exceeded the score and were lonely. And higher scores means higher levels of loneliness. When looking at the self-rating scale, I compared my self-rating scale with a data from ESS, which uh, where I tried to have um, a similar group of people from from the British from, from UK data. So I used um, people aged from 18 to 30. And here you can see that around two-thirds of the student sample um, were alone at least some of the time during the past week, whereas only one third of the ESS sample was lonely at, um, at least some of the time during the past week. Now looking at which, now we are focusing on which students are more vulnerable to loneliness. I did regression modeling, so I used the most significant um, factors from the bivariate correlations. I put it like in the regression modeling, the 10 most significant ones. And here I highlighted the most significant ones. And we see that the factor extent to feel appreciated by others close to is the most important independent predictor of loneliness. So it was all about social engagements and frequency of social engagements and quality of, of relationships. I also included um, a free question where students could comment, they could give recommendations, they could um, give suggestions for my survey. And interestingly, three things came up. One thing was three people, so in order to get a 23 participant uh, commented on this question and three participants commented on health. And all of these three commented on depression. Then second, the word mature came up, although I did not mention the word mature in my survey at all. And two participants mentioned the word mature. And third, also two commented um, that spending time alone must not be negative all the time. So it also they feel like um, spending time alone is sometimes positive for them. So what was my conclusion? Regarding the burden of loneliness, my data suggests that there is a relatively high burden of loneliness among Brunel University London students. And when I compare these results to a previous research, it, similar high levels of loneliness have been found. Then when looking at my predictive factors and when I compare these predictive factors to previous research, unfortunately there is really res less research available, so it's really hard to compare results. And a lot of ambiguous findings um, were visible, but um, also regarding ambiguous findings regarding gender, or, or, um, regarding sociodemographics, but they also found similar, similar findings, and which was that it's all about quality of relationships and quantity of social um, engagements. So people who have, um, who have less quality, who have less quali quality rel qualitative relationships are likely to be more lonely. And my suggestions are students are more likely to experience loneliness than the peers from the general population. And it's very important to encourage students into social life, into social activities, in order to uh, prevent loneliness or in order to, to decrease loneliness levels. All right, thank you very much. Thank you.